Good day and God bless. Welcome to our time of devotion and prayer. Let us pray. Lord, as we look to that blessed scene, the, the coming of our Lord and Savior, as we look for Christ in our life, Lord, help us to see him. Lord, help us to see him in today. Lord, help us to see him in one another. In the kindness that we seek to offer, in the peace we declare to the world, in the joy you call us to celebrate, Lord, we pray that people will encounter Christ and who we are and what we do. And Lord, we pray for those who are loving examples, who in faith are doing the deeds of caring for their neighbor, of showing compassion to those who are ill or even in prison. Lord, all of us struggle with the prison of sin that confronts us with the limitations of who we are that, and all we try, can try and be, we are limited because, Lord, in this sin, we can't get through certain barriers, but you take us through. You forgive us sin. You take us to a place in life and a purpose in life that we couldn't achieve on our own. Lord, help us to accept the forgiveness that we have in Christ and to share it with others, to share it as good news, for that kind of peace is what he came to give, that we might, in looking to him, find peace not just in today, but to everlasting life. Lord, bless us and watch over us. In Christ we pray. Amen. And today we look at the words of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah, and we're reading in chapter 9. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. The zeal of the Lord will perform this. Peace on earth. That's why he came. Peace on earth in our time, in our experience, in the way we live and work with each other and the way we ought to, to teach us in the way that is right, to guide us into the life everlasting <sighs> for all these things and so much more, more than we could comprehend because his reasons come from before the very beginning of our existence, of all existence. And with all these descriptions of glory, we do all sorts of things to to bring him praise in in each and every day. I spoke of some of them in, his, in, in that prayer of being kind to one another, of looking for a way to bring a presence of Christ into people's lives. And that's not something we should limit to a Christmas season. I put up my Christmas lights for about a month, a little longer, since we like to enjoy them into the new year. And it is a very visual part of our celebration. People know, no matter how busy they are, and people know that and can see in that, just seeing the lights outside, that we're celebrating something right now. But aren't we celebrating this in February too? March, and all through the year, middle of summer? Where are the Christmas lights then? As you look to the things that you can do to honor Christ, look for the things that have meaning all the year through. Yes, this is a very special time to, to do very special things, and I don't want to discourage anyone from the celebration of Christ in their life at any, any point. But even though we might take the lights down, look for a way to keep the light of Christ alive in your life and the lives of others the whole year through. That the celebration of wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace might not just be a seasonal thing. God bless and keep you.